Hey there, and welcome to this tutorial on data flow in Wire. With the release of Resolume 7.14 came a new flow type in Wire, namely Attribute Flow. We thought this would be an excellent time to do a tutorial on the three different data flows in Wire. This is a bit of a technical tutorial, but we hope it will help you master the systems within Wire. So let's get started. Every node in Wire sends out its data type under a certain flow. These flows are event, signal, or attribute. They can be found and adjusted by selecting a node and having a look at the node panel. They can also be spotted on the nodes themselves by looking at the in and outlets of a node. A circle indicates signal flow, a rectangle indicates event flow, and a diamond indicates attribute flow. Some nodes are locked into a certain flow. For example, the oscillator nodes will always operate at signal flow, the trigger node will always operate at event flow, other nodes operate at multiple different flows, allowing you to pick the best flow type for your patch. For example, the float in node can operate at event, signal, or attribute. So now for the important part. What is the difference? Data running at signal flow gets updated every frame. This means that this calculation is done every frame and that this shape gets converted into a texture every frame and that this effect is applied, well, every frame. And this collection of values is generated, you've guessed it, every frame. Signal flow continuously transmits data at the frame rate of the patch. If you hover over a signal outlet, you will always see a value. It is not possible to have a signal flow without a value. Signal is by far the most used flow type in wire and is used for everything that has to be updated each frame. The big advantage of signal flow is that you can adjust it in real time. Most parameters you create will be at signal flow so you can smoothly animate them in Arena and Avenue. Data running at event flow is only transmitted when the value changes, a trigger is generated, or when external data comes into wire. So rather than being constant like signal flow, they are sporadic in nature. For example, this random node only generates a random value when it's triggered, and this MIDI in node only sends out a value when a MIDI message is received. Events are often passed into the patch using an outer process, such as pressing a MIDI button or clicking on a trigger parameter. But nodes like metronome and transport beat are also capable of generating events. The data is used to do something like triggering a clip or resetting a timeline, and after that, the data is gone. It doesn't exist continuously in the way that Signal does. But events can be triggered multiple times in one frame if needed. Attribute flow is similar to event flow in that it only updates when the value is changed. The big difference being that the patch has to recompile when a change is made. Recompiling means that Wire will recalculate the whole patch and update instance counts where needed. Essentially, all the attribute flow data is sent before the patch starts running. The main use for attribute flow is changing parameters that require recompilation. For example, increasing the size of this pattern, changing the resolution of this static node, changing the type of this gradient node, changing the number of random colors generated in this little patch. Another advantage of attribute flow is that the values are only calculated once. This is why pi is at attribute flow. There is no need to recalculate a mathematical constant every frame. But you might remember when we generated a linear collection at signal flow. You could ask yourself, do I really need to regenerate this collection every frame? If not, set it to attribute flow and save yourself some computing power. In this way, attribute flow can be an effective way of optimizing your patches. Sometimes you might want to change from one flow to another. Converting from event or attribute flow to signal flow is easy. Just connect the cord and the wire will work with that if possible. Converting from signal or attribute flow to event flow can be done by using the onChange node. The node will detect when the value is changed and send out an event with that value. 
Note that it is considered bad practice to use onchains to convert values that change a lot. For example, an oscillator into an onchange is just bad news. Converting from signal or event flow to attribute flow is not possible, as this could cause the patch to recompile every frame, and your computer will not appreciate that. The size node will take the size of a collection and hand it to you as an attribute. This can be handy to update other size-like parameters down the line. For example, increasing the size of this circle pattern will update the size of this gradient palette node. And that wraps it up for this tutorial on Dataflow in Wire. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.